Hello Indie Game Fan, a big week of new releases is the direct result of the Steam Nix Festival last week, where games like Knights of Briefland did actually push their release date to avoid that, but this roguelike beat-em-up is of interest due to the pedigree of this developer, who made the Briefland strategy games, so it's interesting to see them apply themselves to another genre. The release of this game was a surprise since I just got the press release confirming the date a couple of days ago, where Dust and Neon is a cell shaded western themed action roguelite, but where robots are involved and it is in the futuristic Wild West. Visually, this game does remind me of Borderlands but without as much of the humour, which can actually be seen as a positive where the action looks okay and might be neat. Like this video is brought to you by Duck, Dangerous Ultimate Cartridge Kidnapper, a 101 micro game collection with a sense of humour, where if you enjoyed the WarioWare games, I'm sure that this will be of interest. Five little ducks found a cursed cartridge one day, now having to complete the games within in order to prevent the evil spirit within from turning them into video game characters and trapping them in the cartridge for all eternity. There's a main story mode where you play through the levels, but also has a survival mode where you compete for the high score, where there are 15 categories of games with 5 to 10 micro games each, where the variety is really quite astounding, from all time classics, modern memes, tributes, easter eggs, and a whole lot more, where the various pixel art styles are also very well done. It's weird and funny and it's pretty indie games, so do check it out and support this developer if interested. Doc, challenge yourself and feel the whole spectrum of those very emotions. Sticking with the western theme is Wild West Dynasty, a third person sandbox title which, crucially, is not exactly like Red Dead Redemption, but rather is based around a city builder instead. Yes, while you can adventure out to chop trees and hunt, your main objective is to build up and manage a settlement and to attract townsfolk in, eventually creating your own dynasty in this world. It's a little janky and weird, but people do seem to love this type of game, which has the potential to be huge. Of course, the chibi pixel art of Tower Escape did get my attention, but more interestingly, this is a reverse tower defense game where you're summoning minions and trying to get them to the exit. I love tower defense games myself, so to flip the idea on its head, while not exactly a brand new idea, is still interesting enough to warrant some attention. An impressive looking action adventure RPG is Souls of Kronos, mixing anime style art with chibi characters in gameplay where an apocalypse has fractured the world and a young boy on the cusp of death meets a girl who feeds off the energy of time. The 
Despite looking like a JRPG or visual novel, the action in this is in real time and looks decent, although evidently, from the trailer, it is from a Chinese developer, so we'll have to see on the quality of localization. We have some bigger games like Wild Hearts and the PC release of Returnal, but those of course are in the AAA space, where instead, I have a remaster and a port of classic titles for you, beginning with Pharaoh A New Era, the remastered version of the classic Sierra City Builder title, which just so happens to be a game that I grew up with, so I'm excited to see this game, where under the stewardship of .mu, I'm confident that this will be good, given how their other projects like Streets of Reach 4 and Windjammers 2 have turned out. Similarly, Truxton also gets ported to Steam this week, originally released in 1988, where somehow I have the Japanese version named Tatsujin as a physical cartridge for the Genesis, so this certainly brings back good memories. Smaller games begin with Angel's Gear, a horror-tinged metroidvania that isn't exactly the prettiest and seems a little stiff in terms of animation, but where developer Scumhead is of note due to their previous games like Vomitorium and Dark Xanadon, so I thought I'll give this a mention. Birth is a creepy and unsettling puzzle adventure game where you can construct a creature from the spare bones and organs that you can find, looking kind of weird and strange, but people do seem to be hyped for this. Bokura looks like an adorable co-op puzzle adventure game where things do take a twist for the weird even in this trailer with various parallel worlds looking strange and weird as well.
Just a quick mention again for Celeste Strawberry Jam, a free mod to the popular Precision platformer that adds a whole bunch of new levels, new music and more, where it's mind-blowing how all of this is free, so check it out if you want more Celeste. Dawn Grown is a chill adventure game where you play as a frog who has to clean up corruption and water the land, but I don't believe there's combat in this, so it's supposed to be a low stress kind of game and looks delightful. Paragon is a first-person survival title where the most critical aspect is that it allows you to build and ride robot dinosaurs, so of course I'm in, but this developer seems to be juggling multiple projects at the same time, so I have no idea how they're supposed to manage this. I did have Plan B Terraform on my list of games to cover for the Steam Nix Festival, but didn't manage to squeeze it in, where this city builder title has you building on and terraforming a lifeless planet, looking kind of awesome with multiple resource chains to manage. Spaceborn 2 is a sequel to a game from 2020 which people seem to like, where it's an ambitious space sim title that allows you to adventure both in third person as well as to build and pilot your own starfighter, looking insanely ambitious.
somewhere in the corners of the galaxy, a starship waits for you. A crew looks to you. Make them proud. Expand your horizons, discover the unknown, and grow your world. Speaking of space sims, another one of interest is the last starship. We are building our own custom ship, including a fully functional interior, coming to us from the developers of Prison Architect, who, as a side note, did sell that IP to Paradox, where this looks good as well. But it's not all smooth sailing. If you don't plan for the future, you're destined to fail. The Moon Hell is a grim dark souls like RPG coming to us from a two person team from Ukraine, so of course, there have been some delays where it looks decent, but don't go expecting Elden Ring with this. One of the prettier games of the week is The Tales of Bayou, a choose-your-own-adventure game set in a world of Slavic myths and legends, with two main intertwining stories to tell, and even multiple endings, but this trailer doesn't really show off the gameplay, but from what I gather, it's largely about making choices, although there are some point-and-click as well as inventory management type RPG systems as well. Winter Survival Prologue is a demo of a first-person survival game that sure looks like the long duck in concept, where first-person survival games like this can get massively popular, so do check it out if interested. Hey, if you made it this far, subscribe to my weekly newsletter to keep on top of all things indie games, link in the description below. I did cover Corpse Keeper when previewing February, but this is one of the more structurally interesting roguelike titles where you assemble a party of three undead warriors, directly controlling them in combat as you make your way through the cathedral to slay a demon, where these units do decompose as you progress from one battle to the next, so it is as much about battling against entropy as it is against demons and monsters doing something different in the roguelite space. I strike fear into the dead heart of the demon, because I am the Corpse Keeper. A wonderful looking co-op puzzle game is Blank, where you can get a breakdown of the characters and mechanics in this trailer. After a sudden snowstorm, these two unlikely friends must use their individual strengths to follow their family's tracks. The smaller wolf cub can get through tight spaces that the fawn cannot while the nimble fawn can jump long distances and reach higher ledges. Only by working together can these two overcome the obstacles they face. Blanc is a text-free adventure for two people to play together in co-op on the same couch or from far away with online play. Join two friends for one incredible journey in the handcrafted world of Blanc.
I'm alone. Another title that I've been looking forward to is Hell Card, a roguelite deck builder spin off of Book of Demons, a Peoplecraft action RPG that was a tribute to the original Diablo. Where the radio combat interface of this looks interesting with a co-op focus for up to 3 players, where from the footage, it looks like turn-based vampire survivors or something, so it could be neat. Eeny, meeny, miny, Gather all the friends you know. Make the story sung by Bard. Whoever made the trailers for Loretta deserves a prize, since the choice of music is excellent, as well as the rapid cuts to, frankly, some disturbing scenes, effectively capturing the essence of this psychological thriller. I've mentioned in the past that games like this are not usually my genre of choice, but this is so good that it even got my attention where you, the player, play as an accomplice to the crimes of our protagonist as she seeks to reclaim her own independence, set in the 1940s which was a very different time. It will be no surprise that this game shows up here once again since it's a pixel art metroidvania in a grim dark world, not so much in actual colours used but in terms of lore and theme, where the combat and action looks good, even giving you a grappling hook to mess around with, not to mention gruesome massive bosses to fight, so keep an eye on Eldorand for the week, where fingers crossed it's great, where a special shoutout goes to Patreon indie game ultra fan Sean H, and you can find more upcoming metroidvanias in this video.